appreciate it. It feels that. pretty intimidating. I'm doing it right now, and I'm not <laughs> enjoying it. Like, this is not what I like to do. Okay. All right. We have got 16 people watching, so I think we are good to actually start this up. Uh, hey, everybody. Welcome to the Lore Lodge podcast. I am your host, Aiden Mattis. This is Technical Aiden, also known as Roy, and uh, I'll, allow, I'll allow our guest to introduce himself. Uh, it is me, Wendigoon. I do um, creepy, spooky stuff on a di different app that's probably located on your phone. Um, so there, you've got like YouTube. Well, you all got Lord Lodge too, mm -hmm. but you've got Aiden who does the creepy, spooky stuff on TikTok. I do yep. or mostly creepy, spooky stuff on YouTube. <laughs> so I'm j simply, as we have discovered, a parallel universe form of Aiden. So hi, everyone. <laughs> it, it's surprisingly, surprisingly accurate. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, just to really quickly remind everybody, now that we're at the start of the show, um, we will be answering, we have our 30-minute Q&A at the end of the show, uh, so if you want to make sure that your question gets answered, we will answer every super chat, and then if we have time, we will answer as many further questions as we can. Um, I am the one running the chat function today instead of Aiden, so that, that will be interesting. I apologize, I will not be as good at it as he is, because I tend to get into my my role and keep talking and completely ignore all of you uh and then he has to keep me on track oh beautiful beautiful <laughs> so yeah i yeah there's there's a couple things that we're going to talk about today uh one of them is of course the origins of kind of the the name wendigoon because i think that's <laughs> i thought that was the funniest shit um <laughs> when i when i first saw it i was like this is great um, as, as many of you probably know, if you follow me on TikTok, there's been a lot of people who were commenting on my videos, like, you should talk to Wendigoon, and I was like, you think I don't want to? Like, <laughs> <laughs> the man has 500,000 subscribers, he's not gonna talk to me. Uh, um, but he was gracious enough to do so, so oh, now he's here. Hold on, hold on, how many do you have on TikTok? Okay, Rewind that's that. different. I, I think no, for every, hold on. for every TikTok follow, I think for every YouTube follower, like, tic, or TikTok is like 10. <laughs> No, okay, hold on. You don't have, like, 60,000 subs. Yeah, Shut I have, have 675,000 on TikTok. Oh. Uh. Yes, okay, yes. that's what I thought. Yeah, yeah. you're not going to talk to me. Okay, whatever. Uh. Sure. Uh. But yeah. Now that I've derailed whatever you were saying, continue. I, I was going to say, I... The milk chain. The milk chain has already wall. started. <laughs> uh, they're saying Aiden is muted. Uh, which Aiden? There's two Aidens. <laughs> I need to be more specific. I assume... I, I mean, Milkmaster, did you bring us what we needed? What does that mean? Did you bring the milk? I think they're talking about... It's you. You're the one that's muted. Yeah. Um, I hear you. Which is weird. <laughs> Everyone's going to see me. You... Oh no. We're 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 working on the technical difficulties now. Everybody. There we go. The people yeah, they should be able to hear me now. Okay. Great. Cool. Wonderful. Guys, let me know if that's so, the case, but you should. It's like uh, I, I will say, um what's funny about you like, oh he's not gonna talk to me. Like I I cannot stress this enough. Anytime another creator has messaged me, I have responded in some regard. <laughs> people are always like, oh, I didn't know you talked. It's like, I just like talking to people. Yeah, I'm exactly. not like some unapproachable being. I, um, I did a podcast. Uh, well, I've done several podcasts with people until this point. But one podcast the entire time, they were like, we never thought you'd come on the show. I'm like, I just like someone to talk to. <laughs> it's, it's not a, I'm not a big scary person. Uh but thank you for having me on the show. I appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely, man. Yeah, I mean, We're glad to have you. Thanks for coming on. This is, this is going to be a lot of fun. I'm, I'm already excited. Oh, yes. Uh, okay, they hear you. They hear you. Brilliant. Yes. We, we can continue. Apparently, so, apparently um, based off of the responses, I'm the milk master, and I'm not sure when I got appointed as that or why. No, I'm the milk master. They I'm said, the milk master. somebody said, uh, oh, no, yes, milk master now. speaks. I'm so... Maybe Rude. someone's confused. Maybe someone's confused. Because I was going to say, know, if anybody's the Milkmaster, milk yes, you are. Now you're jealous about being the Milkmaster. Me? Uh, no, I enjoy being it, that guy, to be honest Kayla with you. Kayla Garrett says, Wendigoon is so hot, so... Well, that just kind of goes <laughs> without saying. <laughs> I'm, glad, I'm glad you think so, sweetie. That's amazing. 
I love that. I love that she's supportive enough to watch you on like a completely different channel's podcast. Right. She she is the best. At the start of every episode, mm-hmm. at the end of every episode, there's the patrons list. The Kayla at the top is her because she was my first patron. Aww. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, she's she's been like supportive through everything. So yeah, love love you a lot, sweetie. That's adorable. <laughs> she can also like so... in arguments pull me i pay for part of your income card so that that should be fun yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i feel so lonely now um <laughs> but anyway, well, well, we need other thing <laughs> yeah. other thing we're gonna talk about is i uh, something that we haven't had a chance to really talk about in depth uh on this channel aside from the one like 20 minute nephilim video that we have from a month and a half ago or so but I, uh, you know, Wendigoon has a fantastic like, hour-long video on some of the more obscure stuff in the Bible, including uh, Nephilim and the apostles that aren't really mentioned in the original 12 apostles and some of the deeper dive kind of stuff that I was watching earlier, and that was fantastic. Uh, I got to finish it later. I only got through about half of it before we had to start the show. But, I, uh, you know, that was, that was a big focus of the stuff I studied. I took an entire semester-long course on Revelation that melted my brain every day for <laughs> six months. Um, Revelation is a rough book to read through. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a little bit. Yeah, it's, There's been it's a, dense. I've got several, like, DMs from people who are like, hey, could you do a video, like, covering the prophecies of Revelations? And I'm like, uh, no. <laughs> it's like, I, could, that song that I think I could spend 20 years just reading the book of Revelation over and over again, and I would still not entirely understand what John of Patmos was talking about. Yes. <laughs> um, I, I think, um, it's, well, I mean, we'll get more into detail in it in a second, but the major, I feel a lot of, um, not really translations, but more so interpretations mm-hmm. of the Bible, at least as they're understood today have been so heavily, not altered, but reshaped, through which those are similes for each other but whatever it's been changed through like the focal lens of history Mm -hmm. um because like it's interesting like as information becomes passed down it becomes more and more dispersed from what it originally was so you think of something like the bible and how different like how how different maybe whatever the objective truth is has been changed to the eventual point where we receive it it's so it's weird to think about lost senses. I think it's the reason that people are so interested in things in the Bible, like witchcraft, like giants, mm-hmm. and stuff like that, because the modern narrative of the Bible has nothing to do with that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, so whenever it does pop up, it seems like it doesn't fit, um, which is the reason that I really like to talk about those aspects. I think they're interesting. Yeah, I think the... And for example, like the Book of Enoch, I went back and actually reread it for for the first time in years today. Mm. And there's, there's like direct references to witchcraft and how the, the angels were teaching the, the women of earth to, you know, use plants for potions and things like that. And it's like stuff that just is totally not, not addressed. It's, it's wild to think about is, and this is like, okay, I'm getting into it now, but this is like the, these, <laughs> the, uh, these overarching ideas of things that we're discovering that I feel like we're not discovering. They just been, forgotten and we're relearning them right uh i remember i saw a tiktok you did about dmt yes uh which which not to go down that whole rabbit hole just yet but like things like that like things that can be found and manufactured on earth that open up this whole new gateway that if you look at a lot of things mentioned in the bible or like old records like the book of enoch and stuff like that there seems to be very similar ideas pervade in not only things like witchcraft, but in alchemy and stuff like that. And it's it's so weird to think all of these things have been forgotten, and now we're rediscovering them and thinking that we're at the forefront. But in actuality, we're kind of catching up with how things used to be. It's wild. Well, there, there is definitely a, a and I, I mean, as a, it, as someone with a background in history, you know, as as a historian, it's. I have my thoughts about kind of where we went wrong, but I think it has a lot to do. It has a lot to do with the fall of Rome and a certain mm. organization deciding that they were going to be the new power structure in Europe. Uh, mm. but, uh, Interesting, and, and maybe doing some things that were not in the best interest of humanity. Careful, uh, gentlemen! I'm just putting a mild warning. Be careful. That's not. That's what. This is just not. It's not political. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it, it was a thousand years ago, I guess. Um, 
but mm. it's uh yeah you don't want the no, serbs hearing you it's, yeah it's <laughs> <don't>, <laughs> those guys will hear and they'll be coming for you man i am i am a neo-feudalist <laughs> politically um <laughs> <laughs> Neo-feudalism, that's the best that's, one I've heard. Neo-feudalism. Uh, that's fantastic. Calm down. Neo-feudalism. Uh, yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> that should have, I should have said that earlier. You could put it into the political compass video. <laughs> yeah, right. Where would that even go on the political compass? Like, where would that be? Um, on the Z-axis. Uh, one of the joke ones. It'd be off the right. Yeah, yeah. it's like... The feudalism's the idea of like rulership by property or like hierarchy by mm-hmm. property. Like you have your lords and your serfs and everything else, and then you have the clergy and the knights and all that. So neo feudalism, I well, I, why don't you just explain to me what neo feudalism <laughs> is? No, neo would work into it. Uh, all right, so it's it's that, but property can also be like things like Teslas. <laughs> that, that's how oh, the I like that. Decided. So it's essentially <laughs> capitalism, but with extra steps. Yes. <laughs> just, you know, what, you know what, I I don't get to talk about feudalism enough. I like I I don't I'm not gonna say I'm a feudalist, but like as far as historical like ways that, like hierarchies and political systems worked, it was actually a really sensible like reasonable thing for the time to base it around like you know all right so we're gonna have the people that work the land and produce the food and everything, and in exchange for them producing all the food and everything. Uh, they're going to have protection from the class above them. That's going to be the warrior class. And then kind of aside from that, you're going to have the, the religious class and they're also going to fund all the, all the agricultural science and everything and the medicine field and that. And then above the, the warrior class, you've got kind of a, a ruling class who are then indebted to a monarch. And it, like when you look at the actual time period that you're living in and all that, it, it made a lot of sense yeah. and it, it kind of removes the, the sort of just random warlords paying mercenaries to kill people for no good reason. Um, obviously, it, it, was inter- it was interesting. Like, I, I feel like feudalism itself is kind of one of those sort of symptoms of having a people before sort of the information age. Um, because, like, you got to imagine someone born into a village during that age of time may never leave the village, exactly. much less, you know, like, understand things beyond it. So to have a system structure that is entirely defined on where you were born, sort of where you live, um, totally makes sense for, like, the age that it was done in. Yeah, I don't think it would be a good idea today. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> probably not a good idea if we all, like, were serfs for Bill Gates at his no, uh, no. multi-million. Maker Ooh, property. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's it's no longer that you're a, an English surf or a French surf. In reality, you're you're a Microsoft surf or an Amazon surf. Uh, right. And then yeah. we could have various private armies funded by Bezos and Bill Gates fighting each other. Jeffrey over, Bezos. Over, over, over and all of minerals. Um, <laughs> it's, you know, Here's the thing: it's basically, if, what's going on in Afghanistan? If we were going to um, do a tier list of the <laughs> wait, if we were going to do a tier list of the Google, been. Amazon, and uh, what was the other one? Google, Amazon, Microsoft? and no, no, Tesla, yeah, and Microsoft. If we were going to do a tier list of those uh, feudalists, you know, like hierarchies, where, what would that list be? Who would be up top? Like, what's the mm. one to four of those four? Are we saying, like, well, I think they would, would be rivals. I, I don't think that they would be hierarchy. I think that they would no, be no, the, no. I mean, the like, who? States. I mean, like, who would you want to like? Who would you want to live under most? Who would be the best? Who would be the worst? Oh, oh, who am I living under? Oh, yes. okay. Um, like, who's going to be the worst to their people? Who's going to be the best to their people? Uh, I mean, Say the four again. Tesla, Microsoft. Amazon and Google. I feel like Amazon's probably just right, well, already at the bottom. All right, well, as a YouTuber, uh, I kind of already live under Google. So I'm yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> um, Tesla, Microsoft, Amazon. Yeah. yeah, I would agree with that. Yeah, yeah. I think if, if I had to choose one, I think my top would definitely be be Tesla because uh, and out of, out of all those companies, if, <laughs> if anyone's if anyone if anyone is going to be the great philosopher king of the era, it's going to be Elon Musk. Um, <laughs> You're basing that purely off of his Joe Rogan ever... reviews. Yes, um, <laughs> I want I want Joe Rogan as like the the pope of whatever church comes out of this. 
Um, <laughs> the, the, the DMT church that oh emerges <laughs> under the, <laughs> the, the Muscite oh. Empire. Um, Instead of the body of Christ, it's just like a wafer coated in DMT. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> Joe Rogan is the Antichrist. <laughs> you, you walk in and it's... <laughs> <laughs> you walk into church and you go to take communion and they give you like a joint and a tab of DMT. <laughs> it's like, this is my body, this is my blood, and then you all spend the next 15 minutes just tripping balls. <laughs> I mean, to be you fair, you probably have a lot more people God. there. That's just what the Joe Rogan show is. That's just, Basically. That's how it works. I want you both to know, by the way, the milk chain has been going on for about 15 minutes. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> is this just... your Discord that's doing that? No, Pretty this much. is the YouTube chat. Oh, it's the YouTube chat. Oh, so I can watch the milk chain. Excellent. Yeah. Oh, yes. Uh, they it, all just want just... us to chug milk. <laughs> 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 I don't know why. Windy Bible of Yosemite National Park. Someone, uh, Emmy, 10 Emmy 10 sent a super chat earlier for five bucks and she was saying something along the lines of, um, oh, we I'll just want it. you to chug milk. <laughs> Bring us the liquid bones of the Windy Boys, oh benevolent milk masters. <laughs> I think a Wendigo typed that. <laughs> yeah, I think you're right. <laughs> oh the liquid God. bones of the Windy Boys. Oh, yeah. I see now. Yeah, they are typing milk, aren't they? Wow. Yeah, I it's a lot. <laughs> I told you. I don't know what it's about. But Chat, I just want to let you know, you're probably while, while scaring people away. The, while, while we're uh, on the, the topic, I, the the <laughs> Wendigoon name, like where right. where to come from? Uh, <clears throat> so, I am from uh, sort of south or mid Appalachia. Uh, that's, where I, that's where I was born. That's where I've grown up. Uh, that's where my whole life's been. So as a kid, uh, my grandparents specifically used to tell me all these legends about the things in the woods. Uh, and a lot of them were sort of, they weren't doing it to traumatize me. Uh, if anything, it kind of made me where I am now. So you could argue if that's trauma or not, but whatever. Um, they would tell me stories like, I remember the story they used to tell me about the tree knocker. And it was, uh, it was this tall man who used to walk through the trees and he would tap on them as he was getting closer to you. And um, they said that if, you, if he ever came up to you, he'd offer to uh, give you a gift, and you were never supposed to take it. Um, that was just the story. Like, he would come, and he'd be like, oh, you want, like, this little toy airplane or whatever, and you just are supposed to walk away and ignore him. Legends like that, right? Like, legends. And they, they all had the uh, reoccurring theme in them of don't go into the woods alone, and most importantly, respect the woods. That was always the idea behind it. That don't uh, don't take more than what you need. Don't be disrespectful to the trees. Like this is this is the land that we've um, our like generations of my family's been accustomed to. Um, so honor it. Um, so as I got older, I got more and more into them. And on my mom's side, uh, I'm predominantly like Cherokee, like Cherokee culture and all that. So I began asking my grandparents on my mom's side about that, and they were like, well. The other natives of the region had legends of these things called the Wendigos. And they were these creatures of the woods. And what interested me about them is, and I, I'm like now as I've grown up, you know, I've looked into the lore and I realize this isn't like how the legend began. Mm -hmm. um, because the original legends of the Wendigos are much more so of, you know, the cannibalistic spirit right. that can possess people. But as it was told to me originally, and therefore the reason, the version I choose to believe, is the Wendigo works as the warden of the woods mm -hmm. and as this sort of creature that moves between the trees. And if anyone disrespects the land or takes more than what they need or takes from it, they will be haunted by the legend of the Wendigo. So as I grew up, and I, I would do stuff like go squirrel hunting in the woods with a pellet gun, or like just go walk around. I, I've always loved the woods. I've loved camping and all that. And I always had the idea that the Wendigo was sort of this watchful eye of the forest and that it existed there um, to protect those who would do it wrong. So I kind of found this like, a, like I knew it was a big, scary, you know, evil creature, but it was a weird comfort almost the idea that it's kind of like this natural karma that exists in the forest. Um, so as I got older, like I, I've always loved the Wendigo legend for that reason. So whenever it came time to do a YouTube channel, which I decided to start for various reasons, I'm like, all right, I need a name. So, uh, there, I like, I wanted to be something creepy, something kind of Appalachian, something along that line. So Wendigo, Wendigo was a nat 
natural choice. And then uh, off of that, I really like, I mean, at the beginning of my channel, I, I tell all the time that the original point of my channel is I want it to be a gun channel, uh, mm. and that didn't go that way. But, um, <laughs> and now I'm here. But uh, <laughs> it's like I did a couple of videos, like, I have no budget or any experience to do this kind of thing. This uh, channel started off as, like, my personal music channel, so I totally yeah, get that. Okay, yeah, you know, you know, like I said, kindred spirits. Um, <laughs> but, so I was like, all right. And what's something else? So goon, I know you guys understand, but yeah. goon is kind of like a word that's used to describe like guys who wear night vision, guys who like mm -hmm. to shoot guns and stuff like that. And then I remember I was driving to see a friend and I was thinking about a channel name. And then I just thought <laughs> Wind of goon, like put the two together. And I'm like, that's it. Right. That's the one I'm taking it. <laughs> before, we, yeah. before we switch topics, I really just want to touch on the fact that I just love that based on your description of a Wendigo, that it really just brings a whole new meaning to what the Lorax is. <laughs> it bring hold up, say that again. It brings a new meaning to what? To what the, the Lorax. Lorax is. <laughs> the Lorax is a Wendigo. Confirm. Like giant. <laughs> Bro, that would be perfect. Wait, so that, that can go two ways. Fantastic. That can go two ways. Either the Lorax in the cartoon version is not the correct representation. It actually looks like what we believe a Wendigo is, or the interpretations of what Wendigos look like are wrong. They actually look like an orange <laughs> thing orange. with an orange mustache <laughs> that just chases. Um, imagine a large Lorax just doing this at you in the woods. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I think I'd be more scared of like the yes. Lorax coming out of the trees than a Wendigo. Like a yes. Wendigo, I'm like, okay, all right, it's a Wendigo. I need fire. I need to like you know or orient my Lorax. I'd just be like. <laughs> In, instead of just instead of things that sound like far off screams, it just sounds like far off. I speak for the trees, <laughs> and they're speaking <laughs> Vietnamese. Sorry. <laughs> oh my god. Oh. I anyway, gotta, I need to yeah. have Norman draw us up a new shirt. Okay. Oh god. <laughs> now, uh, I now can't unsee that. So thanks. I'm, 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 you know, I'm going to go delete my channel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh now we need that's a discord lorax watching that. stream night yeah oh boy that's oh, wow that oh my god <laughs> yeah i never thought about it as like how it could be a protector figure uh that's that's and, definitely and it's because and that's just like the what i was that's just what i thought it was i got older yeah. i'm like oh it's more of like a cannibal like monster. that's not mm. as cool i don't like that <laughs> I, I always grew up just calling it the warden like the you warden. you learned okay. the, the fun the nice the nice version yes. yeah the nice version don't don't litter uh you better pick up that can or else we're gonna get slaughtered by an eight foot tall deer creature thing <laughs> um yeah that's the nice version <laughs> that's kind of great actually though it's like Smokey the bear but like on crack <laughs> It is like the uh, ultra uh, eco fascist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is the end stage eco fascist. Oh, oh God. I'm just. It immediately slaughters anyone who like drops a can in the woods. The first thing I pictured was somebody That's in a what green. The National Park Service is doing. Oh, yeah. the, the, fir the first thing I thought of when you said that was I pictured somebody in a green Nazi suit, but instead of like the Nazi symbol, it's like an evergreen tree inside of a circle. And it's just like oh you, you leave a wrapper on the ground and all of a sudden your head splits in two from a 50 cal just coming out of nowhere. And he's just like, don't do that in my forest. <laughs> It's the it's a swat sticker but made out of trees. <laughs> <laughs> That's even better. Oh my god. This is definitely not gonna get monetized. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably. Oh well. But, uh, it just, that's we, that's a, a whole different like National Park Service conspiracy now, is you know, it's actually the like the four one one is yeah. just a Wendigo in an SS officer's uniform. <laughs> 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 I just thought of a new short film idea. Oh my god. Oh. That is, I, I mean, now that we've said it, I feel like oh. we kind of have to make it. Yeah, um, you're right. I'll get to work someone, on the script this week. Someone somewhere just unlocked a fetish because of yeah. the Oh no. no. You had to say okay, it. Listen, listen, listen. Do you, do you know how much <laughs> Wendigo Rule 34 I get sent to me? I don't want to hear it. Wait. Oh, oh, right, you like, know what? I. I think Aiden and I might be lucky because we just have to deal with people commenting when dussy. 
or or milk. That's that's yeah. fine. Comparatively, or that's milk, fine. Yeah. I like. Yeah, here's what worse. happens. I go to my Instagram DMs, and there's that thing that says "tap image to unblur" because, like, as they come in, they're blurred. So I'm like, <sighs> tap it. and every time it's a Wendigo. <laughs> I just want to know who draws that. Like, who takes the hours <laughs> of time required to I, make someone? That? Someone drew. Someone in my Discord drew me in a rather uh, oh no compromised position with a Wendigo. Oh uh, no. <laughs> It was. It wasn't like really explicit, but it was the. It was the. It was the implication. Oh God! Oh, no, um, that's that's bad. Yeah, that's inappropriate. It's it's I the got speech. A on my phone somewhere. I'll never share it. The the speech bubble just says in like italicized writing. It's like, oh, your desiccated skin. <laughs> uh, it, uh, it was it was a joke. I'm, I'm just imagining like. Like oh. 50, 50 shades of gray, but it's written about like a Wendigo instead. <laughs> oh God! I drew up with vines. <laughs> oh Jesus! I, All right, I now, okay. Fifty shades of gone. <laughs> All right. So now that now that uh, now that we've effectively so you remember I said the Wendigos like don't disrespect it or it kills you. So now that we've effectively disrespected yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank God I'm by the ocean right now. Thanks, guys. <laughs> gonna, gonna go and move to what, what's the what's the island nation off the coast of Britain? Sealand. Um, they have like that old World War Two like outpost in the water that they declared its own country. Oh yeah. Does no, no one live there? I think like two people do. Okay. Um, that sounds like a great horror there. story. Yeah. I'm surprised they. Yeah. Yeah. It's... I was just thinking the same thing. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> anyway, so let's talk about nothing. where the hell were we? <laughs> yes, that's what I wanted to get into. Was was the Bible stuff? All right, um, so we're immediately transitioning from Rule Thirty Four when to go to Jesus. All right. Correct. Not to Jesus. Not to Jesus, because this is kind of. <laughs> so this is where one of my my theories comes in with with all of it is that the the reason we have things like the Wendigo and then I. Uh, you know, the, the two a day in Irish mythology and the Jotnar in Norse mythology and the, you know, Nephilim and all of that is that we're all talking about, like, like we said before the show, uh, kind of a lot of different cultures telling the same story and that we got kind of this, a lot of these aspects probably from maybe there was this one creature and that's where the uncanny valley comes in. And like, when you look at how the Nephilim are described in Enoch specifically, because in, in Genesis, you get a little teensy bit and it's like you know there were giants in those days and then it just walks along as if they didn't just say that uh, it's like it's like just walk right over it, it it's crazy genesis 6 is just like yeah so uh there were some flings between angels and humans and then there were giants and that's it there's nothing else to discuss here uh, <laughs> so i don't know what the early church was on just cutting you out know, any context it kind of like disgusts me that people don't talk about that stuff more. Mm. It was like, I'm begging you <laughs> to please explain what that was. Even like Bible professors, like, yeah, it's there. What about it? <laughs> that's not, that's not, I don't think, look at it. That's I think we also exactly. need a, I took. I, I was just going to say, I think we also need a full video on that 300 mile uh, Leviathan, or not Leviathan, the, was it the Leviathan or the. Uh, the right, uh, yeah. yeah okay yeah explain the leviathan thing okay, right. yeah <laughs> because as soon as you said 300 mile too. long i was like i'm sorry <laughs> like, I, yeah i re okay so i realized i didn't like correctly do that <laughs> because <laughs> people, i complained that genesis just steps over giants mentioned and all my comments were like are you just gonna like ignore the 300 mile snake thing um, <laughs> so it's specifically mentioned uh, as being that, okay, so that we have the understanding of the Leviathan, right? Hmm. There is the idea of the serpent or the Leviathan, well, and I knocked my earbud out of my ear. There's oh, the no. idea of the serpent or the Leviathan um, that's mentioned. Primarily, people know it from Revelations, uh, the idea of the great serpent that will destroy the world or, or destroy the hearts of man, as it's worded. Hmm. But there is also... The Leviathan, uh, it's the same wording, the Leviathan and the serpent used in the Old Testament to describe uh, the prophets. It's like David has uh, the, through the vigor of God to, to slay the great Leviathan. So that word's used again. And I, I did the whole thing in the video where I was like the serpent of the 
garden mm. could be the serpent which is also the leviathan could be the leviathan which is the thing in revelations which is a really cool idea to me so i'm not f- that familiar with uh the jewish torah correct mm. yes the yep. torah is their uh, biblical literature the, the torah um, is the the five the five books of the law specifically correct um, the, the hebrew Wasn't... the hebrew bible is the term used what's uh, wait, wait is the old testament it, what's what's like the higher umbrella category? Is it the Pentateuch and then the Torah, or is it the Torah and then the Pentateuch? Uh, so, so it's uh, okay. So the the to- Torah and, to my understanding, Torah and Pentateuch are the Hebrew and Greek words for essentially the same thing. Okay, got it. Um, but uh, the the Hebrew Bible is how you kind of describe that that entire the collection of Jewish literature on Scripture. Uh, and that includes uh, the the Torah and the related writings and all of that and basically everything. So I think Torah is specifically um, like uh, the Mosaic texts, Leviticus and Deuteronomy. Okay. Got yes. Yes. Uh, yes. It's the yeah, first five I, books of the Bible. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's and then the rest of it is just the the Hebrew Bible itself. Mm. Um, so yeah, but uh, that's. I forget where where we were going with that. Three hundred miles. Yeah, so, uh, Leviathan. Anyway, what I was saying, yeah. Yes, the Leviathan. <laughs> so it's never mentioned in like uh, like the quote unquote you know King James version or like our Bible or mm-hmm. my Bible I should say as a Sunday school teacher. I use the um, King James too. But, okay, yeah. So our Bible. Um, in the Jewish text, there is a specific prophecy that is mentioned. Uh, it's like the the children. It's talking about the children of Abraham. And it's talking about how through their lineage, uh, one day uh, they will rise up and they will slay the Leviathan. And then it, in the description for the Leviathan, it describes that it resides in the depths, which um, is its own whole thing. And, <laughs> and it, while talking about it, says um, it, it gives a measurement, one of the numbers, like its cubits are as blah, blah, blah. And it comes out to about 300 miles. Um, and it says that the people will slay it, and then with the flesh of it, they will feed the world, which hmm. is a whole, <laughs> yeah, which is a whole shebang. Um, but that, that's where the 300 mile figure comes from. Cause in like, in like, you know, the King James and stuff like that, it mentions it as the great serpent. Uh, there's mentions of it and the, um, uh, the behemoth, not the behemoth. Yeah. Well, it's Leviathan that comes out of the ocean. Yeah. It mentions like Leviathan yeah. right from the depths and all that. Uh, but never gives like a size estimate. It's from the uh, Jewish text where the actual 300 mile figure comes in. Right. And, and just to, again, to go back to that thing about how it's, it's constantly just like parallels with other cultures. That is not quite point for point, but that sounds very similar to Jormungand from yes. Norse mythology, the, the world serpent, as well as if you look at like Apophis uh, from, from Egyptian mythology, it's, um, the Wild. Chinese, the Chinese had one. Uh, mm-hmm. They, they had the grand, uh, It's believe. It's in my belief that dragons, as they're mentioned in cultures, mm-hmm. come from Leviathan lore, uh, mm-hmm. because the original like text from like old, old like Eastern Asian stuff is about a giant serpent mm-hmm. um, that rises from the depths. So again, it's what we were talking about earlier. It seems it's all om- <laughs> not implying anything. But it's as if there was one original story or text that yep. kind of branched and divvied itself out among mm. peoples, and it goes back to the unified truth, whatever that would be. So, mm. yeah, and of Ooh. course, a lot of this. What? I'm sorry, I just got a question. This is totally, and this is kind of to both of you because you're, you're both um, religiously weird. Yeah, well, <laughs> sure. Uh, trust <laughs> me, if you're weird, I'm I'm just as weird. Um, but that just kind of I thought immediately of the parallel of the the Tower of Babel. And do you think that could be a metaphor for that unified truth being broken into different religions, not only just languages? So I, um, the Tower of Babel has always been very interesting to me. The time that it occurs in the Bible is really, really early, right? Mm. Uh, if I, if I recall correctly, it is you, this is also a little side note. Um, the way the Bible says it, is Adam and Eve, and then they have some kids, and those kids are Cain and Abel. Four thousand years, Noah's Ark. 
and then everything else happens. Like yeah. it just it just casual. It's like the span of what a few verses. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. like oh, there was four thousand years and angels were mixing with people <laughs> and they were teaching them witchcraft and magic and there were giants on the earth and it's like <laughs> what not we have? that is. 4,000 years of undocumented history yep. that apparently giants and angels were interacting on Earth at the mm-hmm. time. And here's what's also interesting. This is something that my pastor mentioned that I think about a lot. So mm-hmm. it mentions that the floodwaters mm-hmm. um, during the Great Flood go to, uh, if I believe right, 15 cubits above the highest something like peak. That. Something in that area. Like So the highest mountaintop is 15 cubits. And then later... When it's talking about the Philistines, uh, it, no, not the Philistines. Was it the Phil- Well, anyway, it talks about one of the, maybe the Canaanites. Uh, it talks about giants. Mm-hmm. Um, and it mentions that they stood as tall as 15 cubits. So the idea being the floodwaters were just high enough to make sure all the giants drowned. Yep. Mm. And all of that. Which I think, I think about that a lot, right? But then they showed up after the flood, too. Mm-hmm. Or our understanding is the only things that lived were the things on the ark as well as Noah and his children. Mm-hmm. Um, so that raises the question. If, black, like me, we kind of talked about this a bit. It mentions in Genesis, like in chapter 6, that there was witchcraft and there were things like that occurring on earth. So if that took angels coming to earth to disseminate that information among people, mm-hmm. did they also come to earth and respark giants after the flood? And it, because we know that giants existed post flood, because uh, it talks about, for one, you know, mentioned in numbers. It's also. mentioned in numbers. It talks about uh, whenever Moses uh, went to the mountaintop mm-hmm. to look into the promised land, that he saw giants in the land of milk and honey mm-hmm. uh, that walked, and they plucked the grapes that were like the size of a cantaloupe. Um, but like the, the promised land that was grape. overflowing with abundance, a like, massive grape, massive grape, huge <laughs> grapes. Um, but it, like that's evid- that's a show thing of giants coming back. So it's like if giants were sparked by angels, did that happen post flood? When would it have happened? And yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's that's where I got and I got into trouble with this with archaeology TikTok. Uh, we talked about this a couple weeks ago, but um, that's that's where kind of I I tossed in some stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, it was it was a big to do. Uh, Pseudo scientist. Oh. <laughs> this is where I'm attacked by the archaeological community of TikTok. Happened. <laughs> do you want to hey, do you, you want to give a quick rundown of what happened? I was like public enemy number one for archaeology TikTok. Uh, okay, so basically, I I made a video that was kind of a one off. I just stitched somebody's video, and uh, they were talking about Atlantis and the flood and all that, and I. I kind of made a video where I was like, I think this guy's spot on. I think that, you know, Atlantis comes from the antediluvian civilization that is mentioned in the Bible. Um, and that, you know, for, for the same reasons mentioned in the Bible, it was wiped out by the flood and the flood was caused by a comet. Because if there's one thing I've noticed reading through the Bible, a lot of things happen that like seem to have natural causes. And it seems that it, in my opinion, a lot of the way that God tends to interact with people in the Bible is through natural causes seems very rare to me that he just like you know plops in and is like here you know here's a thing it, it seems more yeah. more often than not that he takes a natural course of action to do things um whether you believe in the bible or not that's just my interpretation of it having having read through a lot of it and all that so that's why i think like if there was a flood that did what it says it did in the bible then it probably was caused by a comet impact or something like that that caused massive massive glacial melting um you know, and I think that makes sense. And if you look at the exact wording that's used in Genesis, where it says that uh, the the waters beneath the earth opened up as well as the waters above the earth, I uh, that you you know it makes sense to look at that and be like, all right, well, if there was a massive comet impact, then it absolutely could have you know caused a fracture in the Earth's crust and also you know melted the glaciers, and then you would have all the steam that rises up from the heat, and that would cause all the rain and so let, let me ask you this, because this is always an interesting thing to talk about when it comes to, like, the early age, or, or like, you know, the Genesis talk and all that. How do you feel about the firmament, as it's mentioned? I'm not sure how to interpret it, and I spent a lot of time when I was reading the Bible, and especially I took a, a class on um, wisdom in the Bible, just wisdom mm-hmm. books. So that included parts of Genesis, uh, Solomon, um, Song of Solomon, Wisdom of Solomon, like, all these different... It was a lot of Solomon, if you can't tell. 
Um, <laughs> but I, and then then when I became a Freemason, it was even more Solomon. <laughs> <laughs> so Jeez, much Solomon. I wonder where that comes from. No, <laughs> yeah, uh, a lot of a lot of Solomon, and then of course there's Templars, and you get more Solomon. And so- Solomon had way more influence than I think he gets credit for in modern society. <laughs> but yeah, so the whole firmament thing, I can't, I I cannot come to a solid conclusion on it. I I think that it has to be that there's. You know, what it says is essentially that there's the waters below the firmament and the waters above the firmament. And a lot of people interpret that as, you know, the the atmosphere and the earth. And there's a lot of people who right. interpret it as there's, like, vast oceans beneath the earth's crust. And, you know, I think there's probably a middle ground there. Uh, I know that there have been some more recent um, scientific studies suggesting that there might be underwater or under subterranean aquifers that are much larger are, are, are you saying that there is are you saying there's something inside of a sort of hollow earth okay, listen, do, <laughs> do not do not go that far with me right now. <laughs> i was gonna say we've only got about 15 started. minutes left are you i don't know implying, if we have time for that are you implying there's a form of biological life that exists okay anyway. <laughs> what, what i was gonna say about the firmament yeah, go on. is um uh, my my theory around it and the thing that i thought of so it talks about that uh, when the Earth was created, there was a ferment of water that was placed around mm-hmm. it, as it said, right? Mm-hmm. There are theories, as it's talked about in... Um, uh, this, is, this is like a biology thing, right? So the reason we age, quote-unquote, mm-hmm. at the rate that we do and we die at the rate we do is because our bodies have these things in them called telomeres mm-hmm. that are continuously getting clipped shorter and shorter, and that's where basically aging comes from. Uh, the main cause of that is ambient UV radiation, because the sun, right? Mm-hmm. It exists there. Um, now, what's interesting is there's a theory that if it wasn't for the sun striking us the way that it does, we could live, like, a theoretical infinite, but much, much, right. much longer than we do now. So, and of course, in Genesis, there is a point at which it says that... Uh, I, I can't remember the exact terminology, but uh, God will no longer walk with man, and his days will be in 120 years. And suddenly yes. humans go from living hundreds and hundreds of years to the flood, and then we're just living 120 years, which is about the longest human beings tend to live. Exactly. Yes, exactly. So, like, before that, you have people like Methuselah, who lived to mm-hmm. be 960. Exactly. Adam, 930. And, like, living to three, 400 years old is, like, commonly mentioned in those mm-hmm. early books of Genesis. And, of course, Enoch, who it's just, like... Exactly. Yeah. And, uh, and just, he just walked like, into heaven. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, I, I'm gonna head out. <laughs> Pretty much. Um, but like, yeah, like you've got those guys who lived like near a thousand years. Then the flood happens, and people live the age that they do today. So, if there was a ring or a sort of covering of water around the Earth, mm-hmm. um, that could be a way to prevent UV radiation and therefore allow people to age much, much longer. Yeah. The second thing with that is, remember, it mentions that before the flood, it had never rained. Like, Noah told them water's going to come from the sky, and they're like, haha, idiot, no, it won't. Like, <laughs> it, it, I'm summarizing, but that's yeah, the yeah. basic gist. Um, just never heard it. <laughs> Best <laughs> summarization idiot. I've ever heard. I, I, I teach Sunday school, and this is literally what the class is. Um, I, I love, love it. that. But, <laughs> but uh, the pastor hasn't found out yet, and I'm telling him. Um, <laughs> but, it, but anyway, so like, you also don't have rain, right? But mm-hmm. there's, especially in the fossil record, evidence of, like, these giant plants existing and, like, animals were much, much bigger. So it's like, where where did they get, where did plants get their oxygenation and stuff like that? Mm-hmm. There's also a theory that if the, this is, again, a biology thing, if the world was much, 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 much more oxygen rich, there's evidence that plants would be able to maintain oxygen through just the air. Mm-hmm. But because oxygen's percentage in the air is more like 20 25 percent they have to get it through water or more direct form Mm -hmm. so say there is a giant circle of water around the earth it keeps uv rays from hitting us and therefore prevents us from getting older and the world is so oxygenated that there doesn't need to be rain because there's a ring of water around the earth so things like plants and people and all that can just breathe like near 100 percent oxygen and be much more you know active and live for that age and they would much Uh, be much larger (laughs) Exactly. <laughs> there we go again back to big people uh but yeah exactly that 
So then the flood comes. It talks about the waters above the earth came crashing down. That sounds to me like the firmament crashing in. Yeah. And then after that, the world became the way that it is today. That's always been my theory with it. Yeah, I mean, I, and my, my constant thing with this is how to, like, because I've read all of that, and I'm like, hmm, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> and then, of course, and then the scientific community comes in and ruins all my fun, and they're like, well, we know that this happened, and this didn't happen. And I'm like, do you know that, or have you just made assumptions? Like, yeah, I will say, my, my, possible, my could, physics could the brain... the atmosphere not have been thicker than it was now? Like, <laughs> I was going to say, yeah, my... You just had this big, juicy atmosphere... <laughs> well, so, so I, I'm not a physics major, but I have a lot of interest in it, especially engineering and things like that, because a lot of my friends are engineers. I was planning on doing aerospace engineering before I decided to do film. Um, and trying to wrap my head around the idea of a physical layer of water just around, I'm like, how, what is the gravitational, what, just the air resist, how, how, how? <laughs> And I'm like, See, I'm the like, thing is, it wouldn't necessarily have to defy gravity. You might not be talking about like physically, like you know, running water as we know it surrounding you. It could have just been a much thicker or, it, or, or yeah, that's like, true. Or like, if it was physical water, it would have had to have been like in orbit, essentially. Yeah. Right. Orbital much, water. Yeah. Orbital water. Man, I know what I'm putting on the iceberg now. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait. Orbital to, water. Want to see it? <laughs> Oh my god! Like expecting the video. Orbital water. Wait, that's <laughs> Elon Musk's next goal. First st Starlink, next just a layer of water. I, I'm I'm saying this right here on the record now. I saw I this was a tweet. I don't know how legitimate it is, mm. but I saw that there is a the they are uh, going to be launching space billboards. Oh which god! Is like a, it's it's like a aircraft launched into space that can advertise. If I look up into the sky at night and see like a, a McDonald's ad, I'm becoming a terrorist. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm, not oh, the, I'm, I'm not the first one to say that. So I'm yeah. not justified now. I think I saw I, that Ted Twitter Kaczynski thread. was right. Yeah, Ted Kaczynski <laughs> was right. Uh, Industrial revolution and its consequences have been uh, disastrous yeah. for humanity. <laughs> If I see permanent just like KFC inside of the Big Dipper, I'm going to be very upset. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, could you imagine? It's just like be, inside the Big Dipper, bad. it's just like Colonel Sanders. Like, no, stay away. I'm, Get I'll, out of I'll blow up the moon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you believe we in can't the moon? Have it anymore. You believe in the moon? <laughs> I love it. That's my favorite thing to pull on people. I love yeah. that. Someone tagged me in something, and it was a, a TikTok, and somebody was making fun of, like, conspiracy theory TikToks, and they were like, the moon is made out of cheese. If the moon wasn't made out of cheese, then why is it illegal to take a bite out of it? And someone goes, this is every at the Aiden Mattis TikTok. And I, just, I, just, I just replied with, like, do you believe in the moon? <laughs> that was it. That was, you know... It, I felt like I, I need I say more. <laughs> I have said my piece. It's funny because right. like now, and I, I'm not saying this to say like I'm I'm a big deal or anything. I don't, I don't mean to come off as that. <laughs> kind of a big but deal. Like, <laughs> no, no I, that's not what I want. No, <laughs> but, but um, like it was funny because before YouTube, I would like insert these absolutely harebrained random theories that no one on earth knew about into conversation mm. and just be looked at like I was a crack addict. Nuts. Uh, which, I mean, fair enough. Like, someone's just talking and they have no idea what I'm talking about. I'm just like, oh, well, you know that relates to, like, the glass camera, you know, the projected of heaven and found footage of death and blah, blah, whatever. Um, and they're just like, okay, whatever. <laughs> what? Slow down. <laughs> what? <laughs> I, so that was in the last conspiracy episode. It may be the wildest conspiracy yet, but what I was saying just now is I knew about it before the conspiracy iceberg. So I used to like drop those on people in conversation, which is the reason they look at me like a crazy crack addict. Uh, but now, like those same people are like, oh, tell me more about the, the fourth dimensional hieroglyph, blah, blah, blah. I'm just like, no, because you didn't want me when I was nothing. Yeah. <laughs> you don't deserve me now. But I, I want... That's great. <laughs> if you can't handle me and my crack brain added, <laughs> you know, conspiracy ramblings, yes, you don't correct. deserve me at my 555,000 yes, YouTube yes, subscribers. You. <laughs> yes. <laughs> correct. That is the right <laughs> wet mentality. So, glass camera and the oh, okay, projection right, I, I, of I, death. Right. Yeah. Can so you just I, really quickly... It's funny how I joked about that. 
and then I uh, I did the same thing to you guys. Like, just drop that yeah. in the conversation. <laughs> All right, and it, it was mentioned in my last conspiracy, Iceberg. There was a clandestine operation in the late 90s, early 2000s between three letter agencies in the U.S. This is a, this is a theory, just preferencing Theory, okay. Um, okay. There, there was a project known as the Glass Camera, which the idea was it was a camera or surveillance device that was 100% invisible which obviously yeah. doesn't like make sense. The idea yeah. is you could gather footage of a uh, certain region or place without having any like visible thing there to record information, which obviously is like, you know, kooky space brain science, right? Mm. So the theory behind it is there was a guy named Robert Golf who was a uh, big psychic, uh, what's, what's the word for it? Not a yogi, but like a, uh, a very spiritual like uh, D- the yeah yeah like you know like the whole DMT psychedelic experimentation okay. thing. Uh, Joe he was a, Joe yeah. Rogan, yeah. So he <laughs> so he was an early adopter of that, and he was working with them, and he was working on astral projection. the The theory behind it is that he they so you know those machines that uh, you can hook up to your brain and they project a visual image of imagination. They do it with dreams a lot. Mm. Um, the idea is you can watch someone's dreams through a television set. All right, so the theory behind it is that that existed in like the early 2000s. So what yeah. they would do is they would hook one of those machines up to Robert Golf, and he would astral project out of body, and then he could move like as a ghost, essentially, as an astral projection, and that image was relayed back to the screen, and that's what the glass camera was. The glass camera was a neural wow. interlink to someone astrally projecting who could go somewhere or see anything, and that's how they got information. The theory oh my God, is we've been lied to about Neuralink. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so yeah the, right. The right? theory is that he died during one of these. He was out of body for too long and he couldn't get back to his body. So he died and for a few brief seconds he projected to the system heaven as he was entering into it. So supposedly out there exists found footage of heaven from Robert Golf's death as it was being transmitted for a few seconds through a CIA interlink. Yep. That is fantastic. <laughs> it's just like beyond blown. Right? Found, found footage heaven. <laughs> oh my god, what is a there great evidence? Idea. <laughs> what are you no thinking? <laughs> Yeah, man, I saw it on 4chan. Like, no, no, I feel like if anything, you're going to see that source. on like uh, Live Leak or yeah. something. Aiden, if there's one person here who's like, should know. <laughs> yeah, <would> fair. <laughs> see, now now you've just unlocked a quest. I didn't even know I was that, on. So, I've got to so, go find the found footage of Don yes. Golf's death. Like, uh, <laughs> there is. Um, all the things I thought a three-letter agency would come after me for, it was not this. Yeah. Found footage. I thought it would be the Tannerite Roombas. Yeah. <laughs> My man. Um, no, like, um, supposedly there was a, a project called the Glass Camera. Okay. And off of that is where, like, the theories began to spiral mm. out of and everything. That's, I mean... Um, okay, but the thing about that is, like, the... The the televised dreams thing is like that. That's actually a technology that that's that is out a there. thing that exists, um, which is so wild to me. Yeah, by the but, way, but yeah, that's, that's a, a thing that exists. I just want to be clear for for the viewers. That's like that's something that exists. And if you watch like there's an episode of House from like season five where they actually like show the procedure and everything. It's wild, and you don't get like clear images. It's kind of very grainy and like off color but uh it is a technology that we're developing and getting better and better at in terms of being able to read people's dreams which i i still think is just insane that's wild to me um yeah. but yeah so i mean the the idea that like if astral projection is something that's possible and you can also read what somebody's brain waves are showing them then I could see how it would be possible. I don't know how believable it is that it happened that, twenty years like ago. That, that's why I like that theory so much, right? Yeah, because it's because it's like, all right, we know dream neural interlink exists. If you're on the side of the internet that we're on, we understand concepts like astral projection and like mm-hmm. out of body experiences. So, what happens if the two of those occur at the same time? Exactly. And then what happens if someone <laughs> dies during that? 
Yeah. It's a very like whoa. <laughs> like that's you why not ethically you, you can't ethically run that experiment, but Correct. you're in yeah. the right place at the right time. It you sounds like you like would be stuck. That... Oof. Ooh, oh, that's oh, an even uh, right. Like, uh, if, like if you're astral projecting and your body dies, you like technically you haven't died, right? It's just your body. So, on, like, does the well, body depends on how you, how much you believe about souls? And, that's, and then what's the thing ghosts, is like, you know, do you that's like? Where ghosts come from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, that's it. But that's a that's a good question. Is like that comes to that brings us to the argument or the conversation of do like how much does your body need to be tethered to your? Let's assume this is a soul for it to operate. And then is heaven essentially just a, 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 I can't think of a better way to describe it, but a Petri dish that allows your soul to live beyond your body. It has the right conditions right. that you can survive. See, now you're, now you're like, I, we don't have time for it, but now I got to <laughs> do a video on Avicenna's flying man theory and <laughs> Thomas Aquinas. <sighs> I can't believe you had so done much work to do. You are talking uh, up my alley. Yeah, <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad. But on that, on that send note, send you an iceberg to do. <laughs> yes, yes. On that yeah, note, we it is. Probably go to, yes, it's we eight o'clock. So Aiden, I can look at super chats. So that way, it gives you guys free reign to um, like actually answer Aww. them, and you don't have to worry about it because I've got it on my phone. But for the audience that is you. here, uh, also apologies to people who may have just been joining us. I forgot to post the link in the Discord that we were doing this right now. So. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, but it's fine because I posted a link now and it's like, hey, join us for question time. Um, so yes, as usual, Super Chats will be answered first and all Super Chats will be answered before we answer any questions other than Super Chats. It's just a matter of priority and respect for the people who are deciding to donate to, donate to us. We appreciate everybody who donates. It's a big help to us. It allows us to do this consistently and frequently and you know, without the stress that... You know, we'd be putting this much time into something and not really seeing anything other than the fun because we are, in fact, young adults and we have things that we need to pay for. Anyway, I just, so I, I'm enjoying I'm enjoying this one comment from Russell the Outlaw. Mom, I'm yeah. scared. My worldview is being changed. <laughs> um, <laughs> man, like enjoy the paradigm shift, brother. <laughs> I, I, I will say I will say this, right? I am so excited that everything is going the way I, like honestly to me, it's like divine intervention. I am mm. so excited everything's going the way that it is because I hear comments like that all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> like people like this is totally changed the way I think about blah blah. And I'm like, with without uh, this is not a pun on myself, but it really is the tip of the iceberg the <laughs> stuff that I mentioned this far. And yeah. man, I can't wait to like just like talk nonstop about like trans-dimensional separation. <laughs> oh yeah, we need our own. We need our own version of ancient aliens. <laughs> Yeah, Bro, I was going to say, I think we need to do this more not? often. Yo, History Channel, History Channel, hit us up. <laughs> yeah, right. I can't wait. We have lots of free time. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait for this to culminate with me dying of a DMT overdose. <laughs> <laughs> While on the podcast. I love that you on assume you're going to be the one to do it, though. <laughs> that's fair enough. <laughs> we strap me and Wendigoon into one of those dream machines, the and then we camera, yeah. and oh, then we God. both do a heroic amount of DMT. <laughs> and heroic, a heroic amount of DMT. That is a great phrase. Oh heroic God. Amount of did you hear? Like, quick side note. Did you hear that's about true. those guys who like put themselves up to IV bags of DMT and were in there for like a week? I heard about it, but what? I haven't like. Okay, that yeah, sounds so terrifying. Okay, yeah. Not only is it terrifying, here's the craziest part. They met each other in the DMT scape. No Wait, like, way. Okay, like, all right. So, so after just, a few days in there. Was this like a double blind? Or, like, did they know they were all going in at the they, same time? They, they like, did the inception thing. Like, they all laid down and, like, did the IV bag set up and, like, all went in at once. And they were in there. And, nuts. like, after a couple days, um, they like interacted with these other creatures and when they touched they recognized each other who they were and began to stick together so whenever they come out of it they all they're like yeah you were there and you were there and they explained like interacting with the same clockwork elves interacting with the same like in like the uh, succubuses and all that stuff uh interacting with the same fractal planes all of that that yeah. is wild all right really quick so just yeah, jumping keep... into the questions right, go ahead, here sorry. Yes. you're good you're good <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna need to do another one of these yeah, yes what and... doing speed feels like. Just... oh i love it i love it i'm so down all right so the first super chat that we have uh at least anyway recently um is from Vinny vital uh for 4.99 thank you very much 
And he said, I got in a tad late, just uh, got to the part where y'all were talking about the Leviathan. Could it be related to Jormungandr? Jormungandr. Jormungandr, that's exactly yes. what I said. Oh, really? Yep. Oh, that's funny. Uh, oh, yeah, 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 I mean, it's... Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, the short answer is, yeah, I mean, you, you look at it, uh, the, the Leviathan is described as a 300-mile-long serpent, and Jormungand is the world-encircling... Uh, serpent of the deep and his his writhing and flailing brings about uh, the end of the world so he also uh, so I also mentioned like East Asia and you mentioned like the Egyptians did the Aztecs also have a legend of yes. the giant snake underground yes, yes. They, had, uh, they had Quetzalcoatl and I think also yes. yep. the the rainbow serpent of the aboriginals of Australia so again, that ties back to like the uniform. Like yeah, everyone's the, got a flood, everyone's got giants, everyone's got the snake, snaky right? boys. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So the next super chat is from. You're good. Uh, that's it. It. We definitely need to like find a way to just dive into this and figure out how they all tie together. Because I feel like if anybody's going to do it, it's going to be these people right here. Maybe some additions down the line. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's gonna um, be the Avengers of like. <laughs> oh, I'm ready. Old world, old world. Does that make me Tony uh, Stark because I'm the tech guy? Uh, yeah, you're kind of honestly since you're literally holding it together. I think you're Nick Fury right now. Honestly, <laughs> I'm cool with it. I'll put on an eye patch. Right, I don't just care. Need, we need you to get an eye patch, and then we also need some Tropic Thunder level. I was gonna uh, say, so change. I'm I'm some form of Robert Downey <laughs> Jr. Essentially, that's what I'm hearing. Yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> there you go. I'll take the kiss, kiss, bang, bang version. All right, anyway. <laughs> so, uh, glass of water for $5. Also, hi, glass of water. Always great to okay. see you again. Um, she says, I found a cave this past weekend, too open and too big for anything except hibernation. I feel like I found a place that the Wendy boys could sleep in. What do we think, gents? Uh, all right, depending on where you're at, uh, in the south, don't go in a cave that a bear may be hibernating <laughs> <laughs> Or out west. <laughs> I was going to say, like, uh, just perfectly rational, like, non-supernatural answer. Uh, if it looks like the only purpose it has is hibernation, don't go in there. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, depending on where you're at. Uh, now, I will say, like, there's some, like, local caves that, like, people go in and, like, you know, mm. re relatively frequently. So it's not like somewhere bears would be or whatever. Caves are really cool. I will say this, though. They're also super dangerous. Yes. Um, because you could be like, oh, it's just flat ground leading through a cave. And then after you walk through it a little bit, uh, there's either a drop off or the rocks begin to give way or whatever. Um, yeah. Like, we're, especially around here in Appalachia, sinkholes are very common, which is a terrifying concept. Mm. Um, but, like, the, like, so be safe. But it could be really cool. Ask if anyone else knows about it before you just walk in there with the flashlight and hope. So yes. yeah, it's and never, never, ever go into a cave alone. Yes. Mm. Never, <laughs> yeah, for a variety of reasons. How experienced you are as a spelunker, like don't go into a cave alone. Uh there is uh, are you familiar with Mammoth Cave in Kentucky? Uh vaguely. So it's the largest cave in the US. Um it, I've been, it's mass, it's, it is incredibly beautiful. Like you can take boat rides across underwater lakes and all the fish are translucent because they've been under there so long there you have no skin pigmentation. Oh, that's so cool. So you shine cool. the light and you can see the organs of the fish. It's, like, it's, it's insane. They're all blind too because it's like pitch black down there. Um, you can even stay the night in there. It's, it's so, it was a great experience. I loved it. But the way that Mammoth Cave was discovered is in the 50s, there was a guy who was hiking uh, out behind his house, and he slipped into a cave and fell down a shaft. And he screamed long enough, eventually, like, his family uh, heard him, and they contacted the police. And for two weeks, what had happened is he slipped, and he went through an area about this tight, oh, and, like, wow. fell through it. And it, like, cut up the front of him, cut up the back of him. Um, so they tried to get him out by lowering a rope, but every time he got there... It was like dagged knives, like trying to yeah. pull them out, and they couldn't do it. So for two weeks, they would do stuff like lower food, and then they were planning to tunnel in from the side or figure out the other way to get to the caves or whatever. Uh, and after two weeks, he eventually died of his injuries that he got while falling down there because he was. But he was stuck in this pitch black cave, yelling up at them through the hole, and they could never get him out. So when they went on what a hunt a for his way body. To die. Oh, yeah, yeah, horrific. Uh, and when they went on a hunt for his body, that's when they found Mammoth Cave. But they have never found that guy's body. 
it can wow. still not locate what shaft he fell down. But that's, that's how the just... largest cave system was ever found. So yeah, don't go looking in caves by yourself. I, but that that idea that like you can you can know exactly where somebody is and know that they're in a cave and find a nearby cave system and still not find them Horrific. is just yeah. I, that's that's why like I don't I, I don't like caves. I will not go. I, you cannot convince me to go in a cave. I won't do it. I've got this suggestion. Uh, for, I'm planning on doing a 411 video, and I feel like this should be mm. a collaborative thing. Oh, uh, be, whenever I do this, yeah, that'd be that. great. Oh my God, I would be but so happy. Sank. There is a video that I love, and I know you love. It's called "The Call of the Deaths," uh -huh. and it talks about like the worst caving accidents and like mm -hmm. like how caves operate in the U.S. and how the tunnels move and all that. And it is a horrific video, but it's a fantastic YouTube video. You should yeah. check it out. But if, yeah, like Mr. Mr. Ballin has a bunch of great videos on caving accidents too yes, uh, yeah. he, he uh, like another person that people have been like oh you should talk to mr ballin and i'm like it's a... <laughs> you got, like, you got no. me apparently i'm a big scary Dude, person you are I am. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> we gotta get uh we gotta get the whole the whole gang together the avengers of, the avengers yes. of uh, uh what, what, is, yeah, what does he say at the beginning of every video it's uh like uh if you're a fan of the strange dark and mysterious told in uh told in story format uh then subscribe to his page we got to get like the the strange dark and mysterious avengers together and just oh yeah <laughs> do you think would you say but, that because uh, he was a seal that that would make him captain america i feel like we all agree that probably. that's probably although yeah, i'm gonna fair. i'm gonna throw my hat in the ring and say that we should be the justice league but that's just because of my own dc biases but anyway aside from that mm -hmm. Um, just going into the mo uh, to the next question here, we have another yeah. super chat from Glass of Water for fifty dollars. Thank you very much. Um, and she says, "Death is a choice that I rejected." And that is all. Is there <laughs> is is there more to that? Like, is, nope. is that that's it? Someone dropped fifty bucks, said, "I'm not dying," and left. <laughs> Oh, oh no! I guarantee she's still here. Comes into the chat, drops fifty dollars. I think that was to elaborate. Gold. Leaves. <laughs> I think that's Robert Gold. Glass of water. Oh my God! Gla she's oh, been God. here for a few weeks. We, we yeah, been, we're being watched. I mean, yeah. I mean, it, it happens. Um, what was I going to say? It was um. Oh god, yeah. What was the thing that you were talking about biologically? That's the it begins with a T, and it's the things that decay over time that cause us to age. Telomeres. 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 Okay, so apparently, glass of water found a way to just kind of keep her telomeres intact. <laughs> <laughs> and she's, she's not telling anyone. Voice. Yeah. <laughs> Refuses to elaborate. Leaves. <laughs> I'm impressed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, exactly. that's great. Um, all right, so just going through. Uh, let's see. I'm looking prior at to that, um, Emily Green said, "Mammoth Cave is super cool. It's a day trip from where I live. That's pretty sweet." Um, oh yeah, we still gonna do a meetup before you leave for Wales. Uh, That's true. Yeah. yeah, we'll get that going. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, it's me, Senor. Says something interesting. The relations between religions in uh the relations between religions it's just different interpretations of obviously something that has uh, happened is just finding and theorizing the true story so i think that kind of goes back to your idea of the yeah. the uh, the unified the one true story i think that's how you described it i well, could be wrong the the objective truth yes. yeah whatever the objective yes. true story is yeah uh I'm very close to assassin's creed right now uh, <laughs> I love it, man. I'm, I'm, I'm here for every minute. Extraordinarily close to Assassin's Creed. I, <laughs> listen, the the more I play through those games, the more I'm like, some someone here knows something. Someone at Ubisoft definitely knows something. Oh yeah, <laughs> well, for someone sure. Someone here's things. And I've, I've mentioned it. I've mentioned it so many times. The assassin symbol from that is really, really close to the Freemason symbol. <laughs> yep. I don't think I'm. I don't think I'm crazy. Okay, wait. Yeah, I'm convinced with those games, they like took real theories and just changed the name of probably. Exactly. Yeah. We totally. have two more super chats. One from Commander Canada for two dollars that just says hashtag Free Canada. That was a chain that was going yeah. on for a while. Um, with Canada, Canada I'd Reno. like you to know that as far as the Discord mod team goes, I have absolutely zero power. <laughs> yeah, at this point, I am, I am a figurehead. Uh, yes, I am like the Queen of England. Um, He's a puppet uh, monarch. Yeah, I am. Yes. Exactly. I, I, 
Pep has her hand firmly inside of my anal cavity, and I'm simply a Muppet at this point. Um, I don't think she's gonna like man, it. That's that the way you just a, described I don't that. Think she's that gonna a like that. Bad no. Thing no. To say on, I, oof, for your own Discord. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Too- I, I lost control of the Discord a long time ago. Yeah, mine I also think for, established for maybe, government. Exactly. <laughs> for, for like a week, I think I was kind of like, you know, the divine monarch of the Discord, and then my my Pharisees took over, and I'm, now I'm gone. There was very quickly it's like, a it's like, uh It's like during the Cuban Revolution, uh, for two weeks, the U.S. propped up a fake president uh, before Castro came and overthrew him. <laughs> like, you were the two-week fake president. Mm-hmm. So. That's fantastic. All right, the next uh, Super Chat's from Glass of Water for $150. Thank you very much. Uh, Ooh, and man. I'm just, yeah, she likes the yes, sugar pig. mommy. Yes. yes. Uh, she says, I'm just here to be a sugar mommy. You don't need my explanations. Uh, you know what? That's a valid point. <laughs> man, I will, I will Robert, ask you Robert a question. Dolph has got you guys on lock. I tell you what. <laughs> He's trying to find his way back. He wants to give us the funds so we can get to this glass camera and we can find him again. He actually wants to possess Aiden's with, uh... body. This is going to culminate with the three of us dying in the Pentagon. I can't explain how yet. But... Oh, I'm excited. I mean, I'm what, so what excited. What a way to go. What a way oh, to yeah. go. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Talk about a legacy. We're all going to have different, like, located bullet wounds, and we're just going to be sitting, like, right next <laughs> right next to the pen, or the, uh, the, the pillar that is housing the little case that has every bit of information that we're looking for. We're just all, like... M- as, as like we are so close. playing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, this, I'm writing the short film. I hope you know. <laughs> yes, you you do I realize that at least open on the third monitor. You do it's realize like, at... it's like right there is like the Operation High Jump folder with like all the answers about Agartha and the entry There's points. A single yes. bloody handprint on it. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> yeah, right and... on it. In the background, kind of like in um, at the uh, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, you know, where they they pass the uh, the arc. Of, uh, wait, did I say? What did I just say? Yeah, no. At the end of the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, when they're in the warehouse and they pass the broken box with the arc in it, mm-hmm. it's gonna pan out yes. from us by that, and then there's gonna be a USB that just has all of the information from the Library of Alexandria that's just <laughs> sitting there as well. So yeah, it, it it like pans out and it's like a map and it's got Atlantis circled. With yeah. <laughs> You like know, the red seen, string uh, going have everywhere. Hateful, have you seen Hateful Eight? <laughs> Yo, yeah, oh, absolutely. Not yet. Okay, I'm, so I'm a film major. So, yeah. tonight. The end of the movie where they're bleeding out and he reads the letter from Lincoln. Yes. And that it's like it's like even though we died, we figured out. Okay, that's us like bleeding out, reading like the files about. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> I'm gonna. I, I hope you. I have written a movie before. I will not hesitate to do it again. Likewise. Nice. This is not that far. Okay. Here's the thing, though. I've been trying so hard so hard for almost a year to write the sequel to the movie so I can pitch it as like two movies or even a trilogy. Yeah. And I had no idea where I was going with it. And I think I just figured out. <laughs> We're just slowly writing ourselves into you've, the story. I mean, Aiden, you've read the driest key that, that does that's that fits. No, it's a great story. And that is a really good continuation. Yeah, I would I'll send, say, I'll send you a copy of the script too. So you I can would say see what I'm talking about. That's where the third one ends. Like, the yeah, second exactly. one needs that's to be National I mean. Treasure style. The third one needs to be, like, Indiana yeah. Jones slash National Treasure. Like, that's how it is. Yeah. This is that's, I guess we're just in the film now. Uh, I'll direct it because, yeah. you know, whatever. <laughs> um, but anyway, so I we have another... I don't actually being in the movie. Um, oh, I'm, I'm too on. short for Hollywood. Do you know how tall Tom plat- Cruise is, Stallone? Do you think I have the same energy as Tom Cruise? Nobody should. That's that's I let's just be like, fair. I feel like if this is the script, you can muster it. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Really we'll quickly, we can make it work. We have another super chat from uh, Ten Emmy Ten, and then we got one more that came in. Uh, Ten Emmy Ten for twenty dollars. Thank you very much. Says, uh, yeah. does Win? <laughs> God damn it, Emmy. Uh, she says, does Windy Boy Milk have DMT in it? Also, Windy Boy pinup calendar, when is this going to be a thing? You didn't answer that earlier. Yes, somebody said, as a Patreon tier, can we get a Windy Boy pinup calendar, please? So. I mean, I'd have to commission somebody. Norman? To draw. I don't think Norman's going to draw no. Windy Boy smut. <laughs> and he might for enough money. I don't know. I I'll hope have not. To ask him. I don't think I'm willing to pay uh, money for that, to be honest. I mean, with we you. could probably. <laughs> I have enough. I have DMT. Between between us and and Wendigoon, we probably have 
enough artists in our following. I was going to say, why don't we have it be a submission based thing only? Yeah, so it's like, exactly. We're not going to ask and you, you get for a free cleanup calendar. Guys, yes. guys, guys, I know my, yes. I know my discord people. A lot of them are talented artists, but this conversation is the equivalent of like swinging a golf club at a beehive. <laughs> like, I am close to destroying my DMs for a month. <laughs> don't DM me. DM me. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, thank yeah. you. <laughs> yeah. DM the submission. Send the submissions to the lorelodge at gmail dot com so that Dakin doesn't have to traumatize himself further. Oh god, yeah, that would be brutal. So much. All right, uh, two two more super chats. Who say when this he ate anyway? <laughs> <laughs> oh jeez. Every day. Uh, another super chat for uh, ten dollars from Cat Rose. Thank you very much, uh, Aiden. Thank we're really we're, we're going back a few weeks on this question. Uh, did you guys end up going to Destiny's cabin to investigate? Also, any update on your dreams? Oh, oh God, those are two questions. Uh, so yep. Destiny had to cancel for personal reasons, and you know, that was unfortunate, but it was what it was. Uh, oh. I, you know, it just was a circumstance that it, it wasn't going to pan out. Um, but uh, for anyone concerned, she is doing fine. She's all right. Uh, you know, she's she, she seems to be handling what life has thrown at her. And as for the dreams, uh, they, they have stopped for now. So that's good. Um, I haven't had the, the nightmare about wood for a few weeks now. Um, you might want to clue him in on what you're talking you, about. Cause that's, do you oh. have, uh, hold up. Do you have like lucid dream nightmares? Yeah, but not the kind where I can control what's going on. Just the kind where I'm aware. <laughs> I don't, I don't like that. It sounds like you boys have something in common. Yeah, yeah. Did this happen to you too? Man. <laughs> okay, I have to ask, did it did it start after you started talking about like when to go? It and... started after I had an encounter with a not deer. Is one oh did. boy. Ooh. Okay. Yeah, we're we're gonna need to do another one of these because yeah. I want to hear yeah. about the not deer encounter. Yeah, absolutely. Um, <laughs> All right. Le that yeah. led to a it led to a series of nightmares that lasted about half a year. So. Oh wow. Yeah. Yeah. Every night? And now That's I don't rough. dream that much. Yeah, and now I don't dream that much anymore. So yeah. I mean probably for the best. Yeah, probably seriously. For the best. <sighs> oh. Yeah, that's brutal. <laughs> All right, next super chat is from Glass of Water again for two hundred and fifty dollars. Thank you very much. Um Whoa! she said <laughs> I'm, I'll drink to that. This is, this yeah, right. is water. If, if I had that's any right. form of liquid this here, I would do that as well. This is an obscenely large swell of, yeah. of water. I'm not going to lie. I thought you had like <laughs> a, one of those leather packs that you'd see in like Vikings that they drink out of like the first time you pulled that up. One. Right. I was like, what is he? Where did he get that? What is he doing? And I was going to be like, if it was one, I'd want to see you slap it. But, you know, we, we can't do that now because it's made of aluminum. Anyway, I've had a long sword in my bedroom for three years and you're wondering where I would get a leather canteen. Yeah, that's fair. That's very fair. Um, all right, so Glass of Water says, Wendigo and Aiden and other Aiden, take the money, go eat cake, and find the darkest monsters. We absolutely will. As soon as we can, we will. Incredibly sweet. Wow. All of can us. it be pie? Uh, okay, Dean. First of all. Can it be pie? <laughs> can it be pie? That's, yeah. that's who you look like. Oh, my gosh. I don't know. Oh, yeah. Earphones out of my head again. Yeah, that's what he, that's what you look like. I was wondering, like, with the hair you were talking about Wendigos, I'm like, this is I really do not cool mind this comparison. I do <laughs> not mind this at all. I've, I've got the leather jacket in the closet and everything. Yeah, oh, um, I have man. a bunch of flannels that I outgrew, and now I'm just going to give them all to Aiden because he's slightly smaller than I am. <laughs> yes. He got so he got me on the supernatural, and then we both got on the supernatural, and then our entire wardrobe changed to adjust to fit the show. <laughs> yeah. honestly uh like before the hawaiian shirt thing i wore a ton of flannels and i feel like nice. supernatural was very influential in that so, i yeah. still will get a 67 impala and i will put a 502 know, in it know. it needs to happen mm -hmm. i love that car to death it, anyway what's gonna happen is we'll eventually end up making enough money to do this full time and then i will invest that money in buying a home and better equipment and aiden will drive up with an impala like at the end of <laughs> national treasure <laughs> yes he just lives out of the car <laughs> yes yes i'm totally okay with it and the first thing i will say to you is we've got work to do <laughs> dad's, you're gonna be like dad's on a hunting trip and i'm gonna be like <laughs> your dad doesn't hunt <laughs> <laughs> and i'll just be we like he hasn't been home in a few days <laughs> ultimate frisbee got really intense um, it really did <laughs> You you get pulled over and like your trunk gets searched and you've got all the sawed off shotguns and like different yes. variations of shotgun shells. You're like officer, it's for a role play. 
yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, it's, yeah. It's, it's not listen <laughs> in Pennsylvania, in Pennsylvania, there's absolutely nothing illegal about having a trunk full of guns. Oh, oh yeah, there's not here either. But there is something illegal about having a truck full of sawed-off shotguns. Correct. Yeah, <laughs> but see, <laughs> what I'll do in that situation, I'll just go, Special Agent Plant, this is my partner, Special Agent Page. We're on a spe very special mission. <laughs> Don't worry about it. And it'll be Perfect. fine. I like, that, I like that you've got this scripted, Greg. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. We've, we've spent a little bit too much time thinking about that show. <laughs> yeah. Thankfully, anyway. there was never any Tumblr interaction. Yeah, that was probably Man, for the best. Okay. There you go. Come Swing on that beehive again. <laughs> he really loves to. Yeah, you, you better get Archie in on here right now. Yeah, uh, he's, he's right here. Another, here. another super chat from... Oh, I guess he's gone. Um, well, it doesn't really matter because it's not an actual question. It's Commander Canada for $2. Thank you very much. And Commander Canada says, hashtag free Canada Discord spam. So there's that. <laughs> well, what's the free can? Is that like the political free Canada thing? No, it's else? literally no, just. No, that's it's... specifically Commander Canada? Yes. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Commander Canada, I believe it's 213. Let me make sure. Yeah, 213. He's oh, in the Discord okay. and he just consistently gets kicked for one reason or another, like multiple times a day. And so he just, yeah. you know, he, he's, he's starting a, a crusade to try and, you know, Free Canada, man. Like, let him, let him be. Excellent. Look, look at this oh, fluff ball. Cute dog. That's a cute dog. You good boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how the demeanor changed. That was funny. Um, Emily Green has said in all caps, Archie has made an appearance. Everybody's loving Archie. Yes. Um, oh, glass of water. Nice glass of water said in in all caps. It can be any type of food. Calm down. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Man, glass of water. Talk about having like a good. Talk about a follower. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah, you, she, is, she is the the sugar mommy of the show. Have we? Does she have her role yet? Is she in the Discord? Uh, I don't know. That's not my responsibility. That's a you thing. Yeah, that's fair. Um, yeah, glass of water. Let me know. I don't know if 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 you follow me I on TikTok, just DM me or something. I don't know, or DM me on Discord. We'll figure it out. Um, yeah, I told you guys. Uh, I tried to make the the Carol Baskin shirt and. Teespring was like you can't do that. Yep. Yeah, it's unfortunate. So, uh, so I'm, I'm also I'm also reading through the uh, live <laughs> chat, um, and someone said, going back to the script in the movie thing, someone said, Wendigoon opens a folder labeled Agartha, slowly says, "I knew it," as he bleeds out, and the <laughs> movie cuts to black. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. Love it. <laughs> oh my god. Another one from like, that. That's the equivalent of like at the end of Lost in Translation, like he whispers something to her, but we never know what it is. I'll yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's great. Uh, another one from It's Me, Senor. Um, I used to have a nightmare throughout my early life that was consistently at a hotel at different periods of time, and different things happened to me every time. That sounds a bit like The Shining, and that sounds rough. <laughs> sounds like you've got some bigger issues going on right now. Yeah, right. Uh, Whew. Reading through some of these. Uh, Glass of Water just said, hello, boy. Uh, everybody's talking about Archie now. Nobody's actually asking questions. Fair enough. <laughs> um, let's well, it sounded like Archie was going to answer them. I mean... If he did, I would be deeply concerned. Well, didn't you... Do you want to talk about that? <laughs> the, the, the thing that I believe I'm referring to, if I'm remembering... Oh, no. It was the thing you were worried might happen. When you, you were doing a certain thing and you were worried that if you were going to turn to Archie and he would start speaking to you and you wouldn't know how to handle the situation. Well, if I, if I did do DMT and I yes. talked to Archie? Yes. Yeah, no. I'd, I, think I don't it'd think be, I'll be doing DMT. <laughs> I think it'd be really ironic considering how often you just lovingly look at him and say no thoughts for him to just essentially yeah, like speak to you and be like, if only you could understand. <laughs> if only you knew how bad things really were. <laughs> Where are my I'll, testicles? I'll say somewhere? like, what? <laughs> that was very good. Hey. Uh, like with the DMT stuff, I'm never gonna do it uh, for several reasons. But like everyone yeah. I've talked to who has done DMT is like, yeah, I died and then came back. Like that, that ever everyone has said the same thing. Like you, you die, your soul leaves your body, you walk through the astral plane, and then you you're alive again. Yeah, and I'm like, yeah, I'm good. I don't. I'm only going to experience that. that once, and I'm not going to come back from it. There that is something is, about the idea. Okay. Of, there is something about the idea of ego death, though, that just sounds really, like even if you just look Horrific. at it from a 
Well, no, to me, even just from a scientific perspective of just like, oh, yeah. like think like if you get to experience it and then you look at it from an analytical perspective, it's like, okay, it like it felt like I died, whether or not I did or actually didn't. That's up for debate. You'd have to be kind of like hooked up to certain things to really kind of read that. And even then it might not be conclusive. But to just kind of like t break it because uh, my minor was in psych. My mom has her master's in psych. I'm very interested in psych. Um, just breaking down the psychological implications of going through that experience and just you know because when you go through that experience you're the only one who really knows what it is unless you've hooked up to an iv with a bunch of other people for a week apparently but <laughs> so you know to be able to go through that and then come back and being like not to sound really cliche but what does it all mean and to find a way to break that down i mean that that could be really informative and i don't know if anybody's done Bro, that. it it has it has like Honestly, like looking into DMT stuff, kind of people comment like, "Oh, this reacts to my worldview." It's kind of it's kind of like pushing the door on it, like, yeah. Because they all have the same experience, they all yeah. go through the same things, and it makes me so. Well, that's that's the thing uh... with it is like I, I read I read about it, and then you look at what it does to you, and you know how many plants produce it naturally, and the fact that we've detected it in. Um, in rats as being endogenous and that it's theorized that it could be endogenous in humans, mm. but that we only can discover it on autopsy. So we don't know how often we produce it that, while that, we're alive. That, and what's so weird. That's insane, bro. Yeah. That whole thing that like when people die, it releases a ton into their brain. Like, and then you, you look at like the That's one crazy. suggestion from a lot of biblical scholars is that uh, the burning bush was an acacia bush and that Moses was basically just, shripping his balls off on dmt and that's why he was able to talk to god and then the idea that you know what i suggested that maybe prophets were people who were born with abnormally high amounts of endogenous dmt and that it's god's way of allowing people you to speak know, to him. you saying that just then kind of gave me the idea like it's it's interesting to me like we were talking about the firmament and stuff like that thank thank god that every time god does something in our world some action it's done through means that we can see right mm. because i mean it's not like he doesn't have the capability to just like create things and we're just like and we'll never understand it <laughs> like it's done through like realms of science and physics and gravity you know stuff that we can process thankfully yeah, what, if it wasn't that way i think we'd just melt yeah. um, <laughs> one of my favorite uh one of my favorite quotes from a u.s founding father i can't i'm paraphrasing here but it's thomas Paine, and he said that i uh, science is the practice of understanding God's creation. Yes, and I thought that right. that was like, exactly. well, that's one of yeah. my favorite quotes. That's not even political from like one of the founding fathers. It's just, cause yeah. I, I think that's such a good way to look at it. Mm -hmm. uh, if you are a Christian, um, just look at it as, you know, all right, that makes sense. It's yeah. They shouldn't be where, mutually like, exclusive. DMT stuff really. Mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Which is where stuff like DMT really like, mm, no, yeah. well, interesting. I have an interesting question. Yeah. Does the Bible say anything about substance use being, good or bad like i keep in mind i just uh, you know the last time i looked at the bible except for like reading some of genesis last year was back in high school you know i had to take certain religious classes but i don't recall anybody ever mentioning whether or not like certain specific uh it's, uses are prohibited it's not that substance use is frowned upon or prohibited necessarily it is that um abuse of it is so drinking drinking wine is not wrong mm. Mm. excessive drunkenness is um yep. so it's kind of like that and i don't i don't know i i can't recall any specific mentions of like other substances necessarily but it's it's the the mat the misuse that is frowned upon in my understanding what about what about you so there's a lot in the, so like, for example, you're not, you're never going to find a passage where the Bible's like, and don't smoke crack for obvious reasons, right? <laughs> yeah. It wasn't exactly around then, but the CIA it's wasn't that way with then. a lot of stuff. The reason, the God was totally <laughs> there you go, now you're thinking. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> like that. Um, there's several different things like, the, uh, the, like that, like in the modern age, like we don't have exact wording, but we can kind of extrapolate mm. off of what we're given. And the Bible talks a ton, especially Jesus, about keeping your, your mind and spirit clean mm -hmm. and uh, being of a sober mind. It talks about a lot. Mm. Um, so in other words, uh, maintaining your, and there's several different reasons for it. There's things like testimony. There's things like that. Uh, a thing that is talked about a lot is do not invite yourself to uh, unclean spirits. Mm. Or, in other words, like you, your brain or like the spiritual world can be influenced by all these different things. So, um, 
of course, like, God and spirit and all that you need to rely on, but also it talks about keeping your mind and body sound and mm. functional. So while there isn't a thing that's like, yeah, you shouldn't, like, get high on meth, um, yeah. it does say, like, don't, like, give over your mind and body to a state of being that you can't control. So you can mm. kind of, at least I kind of put those two together. So. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, just really quickly somebody before we in, jump in. Somebody in the chat just said, God didn't say don't sell coke. It's Canada. It's Canada. Naturally. Uh, well, and the, the yeah, super chat that's, is from that's Canada. That's along, well. uh, <laughs> along the same lines as um, my, my uh, Reagan. Nobody told Reagan to free the slaves. Like, yeah. Interesting. True, but I mean, yes. <laughs> it's, it's from Nobody the, told Reagan to okay. There's a Nobody there's did. a little yeah, there's a little Nobody bit of mental gymnastics you have to do to do that to like understand what that is saying because like for a second I was like, yeah, no shit. I had this whole I had this whole like facts that like the the whole point was like, well yeah, but I had a Twitter that was all that. It was Dude, can we facts. bring that and back? It was like yeah, it was like uh, all told several things happened in the nineteen eighties. Yes, yes. Like uh one one was there's quite a few differences between a plate of nachos and a Spaniard. Like, no, 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 it, it was, was just it was eggs that, Benedict. Like, it was eggs Benedict. Oh yeah. Eggs Benedict in a Spaniard. <laughs> it's like, it's things that I was just like, it's not, it's not false. <laughs> right. But it also was not okay, useful. I, I see, it wasn't I see what useful saying. information at all. No right? one told yeah. Reagan to free. Yeah. Okay, I see what you're saying. Exactly. <laughs> I thought bro, there, there was I, not deeper meaning that? to that. When you said that, I thought you just extrapolated some like fourth dimensional no. like construct of American politics. Like, no, there hey, was... no one told Reagan to free the slaves. I was like, whoa. Uh, no, it is no. one of those things that you can kind of like say at a party. Like, if you're just kind of in like a group conversation, like, it's, just walk away. like as an idiom, like, you know, <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. Well, I mean, you know what they say? Nobody told Reagan to free the slaves. Refuse to elaborate and leave. Yep. That's base. <laughs> oh yeah. What color is the pill? <laughs> um. Really quickly, so we have <laughs> that's, that's like a that's a that's like a turquoise pill. Yeah, I was gonna say purple pill. <laughs> um, so Commander Canada, there's two more super chats. Uh, Commander Canada sent us five dollars. Thank you, sir. Um, said, have you all listened to the audio recording yet? Also, Aiden, I'm having recurring nightmares like yourself. So the oh, okay, the list of people great. the list of people suffering is growing. <laughs> uh-huh. We suffer together. <laughs> it's uh, the brother. Let's see. 10ME10 10 said she got stuck on a work call. When will Archie be joining us? Well, he did join us already, but he's still here. I will grab him. Uh, audio recording? Wait, hang on. You skipped that, the most... That, wait. That... You skipped the most important part of that super chat, Aiden. For, number one, for $10, which is very important. Thank you very much. What she says, um, also, per usual, when you when you guys do the podcast, I'm getting a tattoo, a raven this week. Haha. <laughs> Didn't know that that was what you did during our podcast, but I think that's sweet, and knowing that you're commenting while receiving... Tattoos is pretty baller. You chill. That is very cool. I like that. Right? That's, That's sick. Aiden, I think you I missed that. But dog. You missed it, but uh, the second part of 10ME10 Super Chat was also, as per usual, when you guys are doing a podcast, I am getting a tattoo. This week it's a raven. So apparently. You get a tattoo every week? It's pretty sick. I would hope they're small because you're going to run out of space pretty quickly, I would imagine. But it's, that's it's a sweet. lot of tattoos. Dude. Unless they're a giant. Yeah. Are you I mean, in fact an athlete? Three thousand L's to cover. Oh. She, she could be the three hundred mile long uh, Leviathan. You know, we never know. Leviathan. Just at a tattoo parlor. <laughs> How big would that tattoo parlor have to be? <laughs> oh my it's god! A, it's a it's a aircraft hangar. <laughs> <laughs> and he only puts like it's only like one portion of it in, in at, at one time, so it's like. The very yeah, tip like of the tail. Rest. Oh, good lord! <laughs> the the head of it's a hundred miles away. It's kind of like, uh, honestly, I didn't I think about it. Someone's audio yet? No, just to answer that question in the chat, uh, I have not Fair gotten enough. to it. I will do that tomorrow. Someone commented on my mystery flesh pit video that there's nothing to say that that isn't Leviathan. I'm sorry, your mystery flesh? The mystery huh? flesh pit video. Oh, okay. this is the that, third time. Yeah, in this that's. Chat. That's just yeah, so, that much, so much more sense. Uh, yeah, you, know what, uh, you know what, Aiden? That one you don't get an explanation for. <laughs> you have to figure that one out yourself. Go watch the video now. Uh, that's yeah, amazing. Uh, I'm honestly that may be one of my favorite videos because like it is this awesome story that never got told. And once I did the video, there's two video games in production now, like two fan made games. Mm. Uh, like the creator awesome. got a ton of support for creating the story, so I'm I'm really happy with the way that's going. 
Nice. That's awesome. All right. Well, we are a little bit past 830. So, um, yes, we are. you know, we'll give it a couple minutes. If anybody has any uh, other super chats that you really want to get answered, that's the best way to do it. Because now that we're wrapping up the show, um, yeah. you know, it's, it's going to be the best solution. Um, but yeah, uh, you know, we'll give it a few minutes. But is there any closing thoughts that either of you have on anything we talked about today or things we want to talk about in the future that maybe we want to like write down, make sure that we cover at some point. <laughs> we need to talk about things in the future. <laughs> <laughs> I, th- I feel like this was the equivalent of like, um, I want one time when I was in uh, Knoxville, I mm. watched two crack addicts approach each other <laughs> and they both just screamed at each other for a bit. As I walked away, that's what this kind of felt like. I love like it. Just, ah! <laughs> like, in a good way. In a good way. In a good way. Exactly. Yeah. In a good way. Um, I feel like we need to do this again in some regard. Yeah. Mm. Um, I I would like to have your your all's help on the missing four one one video. Oh, I would yeah. absolutely love to. We're in. Yeah, because uh, I'm doing I'm doing a video about the Cumberland Gap, like I talked about mm. earlier, and in it I'm going to be doing several like sort of on the ground like um, interviews and questions, and among them is I'm going to be exploring uh, Kajo's Caverns, which is a very yeah. large cave system mm. locally. So hopefully that kind of works as a transition towards more Appalachian horror. Um, yeah, cool. Like on the floor content. So yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, and if if you're doing any on the ground stuff before uh, September 28th, I would love to join you. Um, yes. I do not mind a road trip. <laughs> that would that would be very cool. Uh, I will. All right. Yeah. Got, you, got you, 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 yeah. Right, we we good. we can communicate with each other. <laughs> All right. Cool. Mm. Yeah. All right, perfect. Um, Well, yeah, we don't have any more Super Chats, so I think that's going to call it for this evening. Uh, If you guys want to do your closing remarks, feel free. Yeah, uh, just go ahead and... I'm sure everyone knows who you are, but go ahead and plug all your stuff. Uh, I'm Wendigoon. I am here on YouTube. um, And I do um, fairly low-effort videos. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, yeah. Uh, It's higher effort than ours. (laughs) I was going to say, yeah, um, hour long is really low effort. Ooh, oh, wow. Yeah, it is. It, it, it is. On, someone did message me the other day. They were like, I don't like the way you cut, you know, like cuts in conversation. They're like, can huh. you just do one slow take? They'll be, I'm like, you think I can do this whole thing in one take? Just like, oh, yeah, I know that. Um, but but yeah, so I, I'm here on YouTube um, and I'm very thankful to Aiden and Aiden uh, for inviting <laughs> me on their cast. I had a great time. So thank you, everyone, for watching. Thank you for coming on. Um, yeah, seriously. Yeah, this was a great time. I cannot wait to see where where uh, your stuff goes and what we can work on together in the future because this has been mm-hmm. a great time. This has been good. Oh, yeah. Yes. But, uh, uh, yeah. I also need to like, I realize TikTok is like useful. If, for the longest time, I was kind of like just not wanting to partake in it. But I'm like, yeah, that's pretty cool. Honestly, seeing your TikTok was like the thing that made me Aww. be like, all right, this site has potential. <laughs> uh, I probably would like to do something on that eventually and may need some pointers. Yeah. So. yeah, it's it's a it's a very good app to use. as kind of like almost a, a commercial for your, your YouTube content, mm. I found. Mm. Just to get people into it, kind of. You just... Because you, you, you bit... What people love is you... If you tell things, if you say things the right way, and you're, you just kind of cut it off at the right spot, people are like, wait, c- please continue. And I, I, re- I refuse to do part twos of things. Like, a lot of people on TikTok will be like, part one, part two, part three. And what I found right. is I was like, I'm just going to do part one, and then if you want to get the rest of it, go on my YouTube. Like, yeah. yeah, that's, uh, and I agree, that probably is yeah. the best way to go about it. Yeah, so it's, yep. it's a really good app for, like, m- marketing yourself, and I, but I, I'm happy to have another discussion about that in private. Um, but yeah, uh, so thank you so much for coming on. Uh, of course. This, everyone, this is Wendigoon, and, um, you know, go check out all of his stuff if you haven't yet, because... Oh my God! Uh, the level, Fantastic. The level Fantastic of research stuff. that has been put into this is really incredible. Um, mm. But yeah, so I and of course I, this is the War Lodge official podcast. I'm Aiden Mattis. The blonde one is Aiden Thornbury, and you can find us on TikTok at uh, the Aiden Mattis and Director Aiden, and that's the same for Instagram. Um, my Snapchat is also the Aiden Mattis. Pretty much everything is the Aiden Mattis or just at Aiden Mattis. If you can find it, uh, if you like the show and you want to support us, uh, we have one through $25 tiers on Patreon and those Patreon tiers get you little different fun gifts here and there, as well as access to things like short stories and, uh, some more academic stuff that I've been working on. Like I did a, uh, 
transcription of a poem into prose from an old Welsh poem that I just thought was a fun exercise. So that's on there. And there's, uh, there's a paper on the Knights Templar. There's one on Glendower, just all sorts of different stuff that's on there that if you want to check it out, um, all of that is available to patrons and, uh, you know, check out my OnlyFans. Um, and that's it. Also, um, I don't actually have an OnlyFans. <laughs> yeah, thank God. That was, that was a joke. Um, <laughs> in addition to that, feel free to, uh, like you said, check out my Instagram. I just put a a photo up for the first time in like three years last night at the Dead & Co. concert with a nice pretty rainbow in the background that's ending right at the stage. It's pretty nice. Feel free to check it out. Um, also, yes, I'm going to be starting to put up some of my own content on the YouTube. We will be doing Thornberry Thursdays. It's not going to be every week because I'm going to do a little <laughs> bit more in-depth things. Uh, I still want to do a defense of the Martha scene from uh, Batman v Superman. It will happen. You will understand why it's brilliant. Uh, you can still think it's stupid, but it is brilliant. Anyway, um, thank you for joining us, everybody, I like today. That, I, I like that opinion. Uh, yes. I also share that opinion. Oh, oh I can't that. wait to talk <laughs> about that. Um, but yes, so anyway, thank you, everybody, for uh, watching. Thank you, everybody, for donating. It was absolutely fantastic. Oh, also, I'm going to be putting up uh, scripts, short short films and short stories on my Patreon, as well, or on our Patreon, but it's going to be like my Your section Patreon. of it or whatever. Yes, our Patreon, it's not mine. Um, my like section of it or whatever. Off I left. don't know how it works. <laughs> <laughs> On your left? Sorry. Um, <laughs> My Patreon. <laughs> you <want a> Patreon. <laughs> don't get don't get too big for your britches there, boy. Um, what what kind of what kind of live right madness is this? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, no 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 wees in this town. Anyway, so thank you everybody for joining. I do need to close this uh, window out so we can say goodbye to everybody. Um, but yeah, we'll be back here next week on Sunday. There's no reason we're not going to be able to do Sunday next week, right? No. Cool. All right. Seven o'clock next Sunday. We hope to see you all here. All right.